Hello and uh, welcome to uh, Cure Expert Connections. Uh, I'm uh, Dr. Robert Kreitman and uh, I'm here with uh, Vince Fazio and uh, um, uh, he's going to share with us his journey uh, through uh, several decades actually with uh, hairy cell leukemia. Vince, why don't you uh, tell us a little bit about your um, early experience with hairy cell? Yeah, uh, I was playing with the kids uh, one evening and I'd rolled over. I was on the floor with them playing. I rolled over onto my stomach and I felt this lump underneath my stomach rib cage area. And I said, well, to myself, hey, I must have ate too much for dinner. So <laughs> I didn't think nothing of it. And I watched it for the next few days and it didn't go away. So I made an appointment with my primary care. I pointed it out to him and he checked it out and said, oh, it's probably nothing. And then <clears throat> later that day after that appointment, I got a call from his office saying that you need to go see a hematologist or an oncologist. Now, at that time, I didn't exactly know what a hematologist was, but I did know what an oncologist was. And that started the most nerve-wracking two-week period of my life, not knowing what was wrong with me, not knowing whether there was a treatment. I was so on pins and needles through that period of time, I could not concentrate on anything, work, nothing. All I had on my mind was what's wrong with me and how can I get rid of it? And that was uh, in 1998, right? Yes, that so was that in was... 1998. Okay, so it was a little over 20 years ago. Okay, and um, so uh, you're, you bring up some interesting um, uh, classic uh, uh, experiences that people have with hairy cell leukemia when they get diagnosed. Um, this, uh, this disease has, uh, w was described uh, by Bertha Bronkley back in 1958. Uh, and uh, back then, as well as now, patients present with uh, splenomegaly, a large spleen. Spleen's up here in the left upper quadrant of the abdomen, um, and also with low blood counts. Uh, so I imagine that uh, the reason he said you should see a hematologist, he had a, a blood count and uh, the, uh, uh, the, the normal blood counts were low. And uh, so uh, this is a way that patients present. Number one, low blood counts. Number two, uh, with uh, a large spleen. Um, some patients present with uh, bruising uh, or infection. The bruising is from a low platelet count. The infection is due to a low uh, neutrophil count. Uh, so this, the, this is sort of the classic way that patients present uh, with, uh, with hairy cell leukemia. Uh, it's uh, pretty much as similar nowadays as, as it was back then. Hairy cell leukemia um, is, uh, uh, is called a rare disease. Uh, it's, uh, uh, there's about, uh, uh, there's about uh, um, uh, 1,250 new cases per year in the United States. Uh, back when it was first described, uh, there were about 600 new cases per year in the United States, about 2% of all leukemias. Uh, so that's quite a few uh, patients. Um, people ask, how prevalent is it? Uh, we don't know exactly, but the fact is, uh, over the last 30 years or so, since we've had good treatments, uh, the purine analog treatments, um, we've, uh, pa patients have not been dying of it uh, very much but uh, they haven't been cured either. And so there's an accumulation of patients from year to year. Uh, and uh, patients typically will get diagnosed between the ages of 45 and 55. So they're pretty young. And so really for the last 30 years, uh, patients have not been dying. Uh, they've been accumulating. Uh, there could be several, there could be uh, tens of thousands of patients by now uh, with hairy cell leukemia um, in, in the United States and uh, maybe the same number in Europe and, um, and uh, many in other places of the world. Uh, so it gives you an idea about how common it is. It's not, it's not uh, a common disease. Uh, many pe people call it a rare disease, but it's, uh, it's a disease that we see uh, fairly often. I, I like to think of it as uh, there's maybe three or four new cases per day in the United States.
so, so your main uh, symptoms were uh, the, uh, um, the, the, uh, this abdominal mass. Were you having any fatigue or bruising or anything at the time? None that I noticed. The only thing I noticed was the, the lump underneath my rib cage on the, on the left side. Mm-hmm. Um, but I felt normal. Mm-hmm. And then uh, uh, I suppose your doctor went ahead and did a, or the uh, hematologist that you went to did a bone marrow biopsy. And Yes, that was, that was a scary, scary uh, event. I went to my first appointment with my hematologist, um, and he did a bone marrow biopsy right there in the office. At that time, I didn't know what a bone marrow biopsy was, and I didn't know what to expect. But I know when we, they put me on the table and rolled me to my stomach, and one of his nurses came up to me and said, do you want to hold my hand? I knew I was in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> so it was a, it was a pretty harrowing experience to, to go through that. I, yeah, you know, doctor was pushing on my back. I didn't know what, what was going on, but and then it was painful because it was the first time I've had it done. Mm-hmm. And how long did it take for them to figure out what it was or to tell you what it was? It took two weeks, and as I said, that was two weeks of of very nerve wracking experience, mm. waiting for that that diagnosis and whether there was a treatment for that diagnosis. Right, right. And uh, so I mu- you must have uh, had a fear like uh, you were going to be told that you have something that uh, can't be treated. Oh, yeah. I did, I did the probably one of the worst things you could do is go on the Internet and check all kinds of sources. And I was self-diagnosing myself. So yeah. I had myself in the grave in three <laughs> weeks. <laughs> right. Uh, did they do a, a, a spleen, uh, like an imaging test, like a CAT scan or a... Uh... Uh, ultrasound? Yeah, eventually I did get all those tests uh, mm-hmm. tests done. But what I remember is, is primarily the bone marrow biopsy was the first thing that was, that right. was I, I could remember going back that far. Right, that's a pretty memorable test. 